नमस्कार दिस इज देवदीप प्रकाशता फ्रॉम आई टी बॉम्बे वेलकम यू टू दिस लाइव सेशन ऑन माई कोर्स बिजनेस फंडामेंटल फॉर एंटरप्रनियर्स पार्ट टू एक्सटर्नल ऑपरेशन द कोर्स इट सेल्फ स्टार्टेड ए फ्यू वीक्स बैक एंड दोज ऑफ यू हैव पार्टिसिपेटेड ऑलरेडी एंड स्टार्टेड वॉचिंग द वीडियोज एंड डूइंग द असाइनमेंट्स थैंक यू for joining in the course itself will run for a few more days and while the course runs feel free to use the discussion forum to ask questions and clarify doubts for this particular session we have already received a lot of questions and i'll cover some of those questions i'll also recap the course so you understand the context of what this course is all about and on the youtube chat feel free to ask any new questions so with that let me start sharing my screen and take you through some of what we have already talked a little bit of new material and specifically answer the questions you have asked So let me share my screen. So this is the live session and this should not take more than an hour but I'm happy to extend if there is a lot of question that you have asked. let me start with a recap of what is the course objective just to remind you this is actually a two part course first part ran in the first semester which is the last semester and this course itself is running this semester so what's the objective the first is that businesses today are very complex companies are very multifunctional and if you are a student studying in any one domain for example you are doing engineering or arts or science or commerce you may not have a full view of business similarly if you are an employee in any one function finance operations logistics or hr you may not have a full view of the company so what i've tried to do in this course is to give you an overall view of business and how companies work so the easiest way to think of this course is that this is a mini mba course this is a mini mba course it's mini because it doesn't go deep into any of the topics for that you can join a full mba course for those of you are trying to start up and considering i want to not go for a job but start a business and create jobs startup is exciting but you need skills you need multifunctional skills so you need to be aware of what is needed to start up hopefully this course gives you that if you are a faculty again you can get a view of business outside your own domain whatever that domain be engineering or maths or science or commerce or arts or humanities and the overall objective therefore is for you to manage your careers better whether you are a student a faculty an employee an entrepreneur or just someone who wants to learn about business so that's the objective the other factor that you should all consider is that it's also a fast changing world the world is changing there was covid now there is wars there's geopolitical tension supply chains are moving from china being china centric to maybe other countries like india companies are reworking artificial intelligence is going to change a lot of things robotics are coming up 
And therefore, if you look at the survey that World Economic Forum did, World Economic Forum is a very leading think tank in the world. And they have said in the jobs report published in 2025, uh, in 2020, that by 2025, all existing employees, 50% of them, 50% of the existing employees will need to be reskilled because the jobs will get obsolete. Some of the skills will get obsolete. And therefore, you need more skills. And the skills are not necessarily your domain specific skills, they're not necessarily the next gen of electrical, mechanical, or civil engineering, or the next level of art, science, or commerce. So they have called out certain skills. And if you look at the top 10 skills that they predicted for 2025, you'll find that most of them are not related to the domain. They're broad-based. They're analytical thinking and innovation. But you really can't innovate and you cannot really fully analyze a complex problem unless you have a broad-based view of the life or the world or business. And therefore, you need a broad-based perspective, which I'm trying to provide through this course. So then who are the participants? So if you just look at the data, for the last semester course, I had about 9,000, a few less than 9,000 um, learners. There are 500 plus faculty, and there are 700 plus working professionals in the learner base. And this semester, I have about few less than 8,000, 7,945, which you can see the website. But that also includes 500 plus faculty and 500 plus working professionals. So this course is designed for students in any, any domain trying to choose a better career option. It's designed for working professionals who want to broaden their business understanding, a finance person who wants to understand broader business. An operations person wants to understand marketing, a little bit about marketing, a little bit about finance. HR person wants to understand a little bit about marketing and finance and then manage their career better. Same with faculty. Faculty in any one domain trying to get a better handle on business realities and which includes real world realities as well. So these are the participation profiled in my last two courses, including the one running now, and who the course is targeted for. Moving on, so what's the course structure? The course structure, as I said earlier, is holistic, it's broad. The way I run it is with a lot of real world examples. And if you enroll in the course, you'll find that there are a lot of industry experts and real world experts, veterans who add on guest lectures. So you'll find my own lectures with a lot of examples, but you'll also find a lot of real world examples from industry veterans and otherwise leaders. And as I said, there is in two parts. Part one covers the internal operations of a company. Part two covers the external operations of the company. And by the way, I'm working with NPTEL to see if I can combine the two four-week courses into one eight-week course. But for now, this semester, we have running a four-week course, fundamental business fundamental for Entrepreneurs are two external operations. Let me start with part one. So we get a holistic picture of business fundamentals. So part one, which ran last semester, cover the internal operations of a company. For example, what is business? What's a company? What are the structures of company? And then as you get into a company internally, What's the vision of a company, mission, goals? What are the strategies and culture of a company? 
And as you deep dive, how does a company innovate and create new products? How does a company manufacture millions and billions of pieces of soaps or shampoos or smart smartphones or laptops or spectacles or dresses? How do you create millions and billions and crores of such products with quality? Then I talked about finance and accounting. How do you manage cash? What is profit and loss? What is balance sheet? How do you make sure that you don't go broke or bankrupt? What is accounting? And then the last course also covers leadership and human resources. So what's leadership? Each of you will be a leader in the coming years. But how can you accelerate your leadership journey? How do you lead teams? And if you form a company as an entrepreneur, how do you lead your company, your startup? And finally, I talked last semester about a very important aspect of ESG, which is environment, society, and governance. You read a lot of newspaper reports about companies which have gone bad companies whose licenses have been taken away from the government, companies whose founders are in legal trouble or are going to jail. You also read, read about companies who are exploiting our planet or exploiting labor. And therefore, each of you who is watching this video, as you grow in your career, you have to take care of the planet. You have to take care of the people. You have to be well-governed yourself, and inside your company or your team or your college that you're part of. So that was part one. This semester, the topics that I've covered are external. It starts with market research. Then it goes into customers and segments because there's no company without customers. Then it gets into once you've found your market and your customers, how do you market your products? How do you do value-based marketing? A sustainable, authentic marketing program. How do you communicate? How do you advertise? How do you build a brand? How do you do digital marketing? And in the next few days, if you follow the lecture series, you'll find that I talk about sales. How to sell? What are channels? How to sell on Amazon or Flipkart or in a mall? or in a small store, how to do that. And then I go on to talk about sales skills. Each of you will need to sell yourself. For example, even if you're an academician, you need to sell your proposal to get a grant. So you may not be a salesperson, but you still need to sell. If you are a founder, you need to sell your pitch to investors to raise money and to banks to get a loan. So sales skills are very important. And then you talk about customer service. How do you make sure that the customers you have, their problems are being taken care of and that they're so loyal, so loyal that they recommend your company to others. And then I'll talk a little bit about supply chain and logistics. India itself has got 150 crore Indians. So if you have a company, how do you reach to 150 crore consumers in India and 600 crore consumers across the world? So that's supply chain and logistics. So that's this course discussion flow. Let me pause here for a minute and look at some of the questions which I have received. So many of you have sent, sent me questions ahead of time. And I've received many questions. So let me just look for a minute on whether I'm answering your questions. Meanwhile, you can reflect. Remember, in my course, I always have reflection points. I have a reflection point now for you to reflect about the course itself. And then I'll get come back 
in one minute to go back to this live session. So please reflect for a minute. Okay, I've had a chance to look at the questions that have come in. And a lot of the questions was about the objective of the course. And there are some questions on how do you best use this course, what you have learned. So I've just up till now, I've summarized what the objectives and the structure of the course is and how the participants can look at the course I'll get to the next lot of questions in a while, which is about what can I do with what I've learned? What do I do after this course? So I'll get there in a while. But let me just continue to recap the course for you. Very quickly recap. Module one was about market research. It had three modules. All my courses are structured as four modules, an introductory module, and then three deep dive. Module. So that was the first module. You can see it on the screen. It's about market research. And all the modules you'll note also talks briefly about what are the skills you need if you want to be an expert or build a career in that domain, in that function. The next topic was about customers, a very, very important topic. Because there is no business without customer. Even if you're a college and you're competing for students' enrollment or in an online platform and you're competing for students to enroll, because students have a choice. Students, in some ways, are your customers till they have enrolled in a college or in a course. Once they enroll in a college or a course, they become a student. But before that, when the students are, or the potential students are choosing a course or a college, they are still as customers. And therefore, it's important to understand what are the needs? What are the segments? As I said, just a bit back, even in this course, there are several segments who can use this course. Working professionals, students, faculty, aspiring entrepreneurs, and so on. So they're customer segments for me, for my course, this course. And then what is the value proposition? Which means, what is the objective of my course? So you need to define that, whichever career are you in correctly. Next, we talked about marketing. And marketing is all pervasive. It's not just about companies. Even if you're in a college, you have to market your college in a government approved way. For, a, for example, NIRF ranking, accreditation, so marketing needs to be authentic, it to be, needs to be value-based, and therefore it needs to be sustainable. And that's what I talked about in this module. And then I talked about what skills you need to become a marketeer. Then we talked about marketing communication, which is an essential part of marketing. And it includes how do you build a brand? How does your college be perceived as the best college in India or beyond India? How do you as a faculty be known as the best faculty 
And how do you create a personal brand, leaving aside your college brand or your company brand or your product brand? And again, it has to be authentic. It has to be genuine. It has to add value. It cannot be cheating or lying or saying wrong things. So how do you do that? How do you authentically communicate? And I talked about all of that. Marketing, branding, positioning, advertising, and what skills you need to be a good marketing communicator. For example, if you want a job in an advertising company. Then I've moved on in this course to channels and distribution, especially if you have a product or a service. What are the sales channels? Amazon, Flipkart, if you're an airline, make my trip. If you're a movie hall, book my show. If you're a restaurant, Swiggy Zomato, and so on. Or it could be a mall, or it could be a small store. So how do you distribute? And then if you want to get into retail management as a career, what are the skills that you need? I talked about that too. And then, of course, the very important art of selling. There's an art of selling and there's a science of selling. The art of selling is a lot of soft skills. Connecting with your customer, being persuasive, solving problems, etc. And then the science of selling, the data to analyze customers, whether they're profitable, not profitable, whether their revenues are growing with you or not growing with you. And then B2B and B2C, how do you sell to companies, B2B, or how you sell to individual customers, B2C. And then I talked about Salesforce automation and AI tools. And then of course, like in every module, I talked about sales skills, if you want a career in sales. The next module, which will probably be released this week or the next week, is around customer service. So what is customer service? What are the goals and strategy of customer service? Not to solve only the customer's problem, to, but make sure that your customers like you so much, rate you so high, that your current customers always go around and tell your future customers, wow, that company is a great company. That college is a great college. Your students goes and says, oh, wow, my professor was the best professor I ever had. So how do you create that experience for your customers, for your students, et cetera? And of course, I talked about supply chain. If you are in product, how do you reach from your factory to lots and lots of customers across the country or across the world? And what are the skills that you need to build a career in a great logistics company like DHL or FedEx or UPS or Blue Dart? And these are all career options. Now we come to an important questions which many of you have asked. Again, let me, I'm just looking it up on my phone, all the questions that has come. And many of you have actually asked me, what should I do after the course? How do I best use what I've learned in the course? What can be the future plan of these are the kind of questions. I just looked it up on the phone. So let me answer the question. What can you do after this course? First of all, if you have done only this course, which is part two, please go ahead and do part one. Because between part one and part two, it covers the entirety of business or how a company works. The other option is, if you like something, so if you're a finance person who wants to learn more about marketing, if you're an engineer who wants to know about business, if you are a student who wants to become an entrepreneur, then join a specialized management program or a specialized entrepreneurship program so you can go deep into it. This is like a mini MBA. It's very broad, gives an overview, but you really want to go deep, you have to enroll into an MBA course, which is maybe a one or two years, or an entrepreneurship course. The school that I am part of, the DS School of Entrepreneurship at IIT Bombay, we offer 
entrepreneurship courses and an entrepreneurship minor, and you're planning to launch an online course, Masters of Engineering in Innovation and Entrepreneurship in the next academic year. And many of you can enroll in it online, just like you're enrolling online for this NPTEL course. So if you want to deep dive into an entrepreneurship program, you can look up DS School of Entrepreneurship at IIT Bombay, of which I am a part. And we're going to launch a master and MNG, a master's program in innovation and entrepreneurship run by seasoned academician and industry veterans. And you can join there or you can join an MBA course. The other thing, if you believe that you are ready to do a startup, and I encourage all of you to think about doing starting your own business. If you're young, this is the time to start up. Even if you fail, it's fine. Because you have learned from your failure. And when you go for a job, you can always say that I started up, but I could not succeed because of one or two or three reasons. And if you succeed, you can read a lot about the kind of successes that entrepreneurs are having all around you. It's not about just the big guys who are earning billions of dollars, which and it's called unicorns. But there are many companies which may not be a unicorn or a billion dollar valuation, but they may have valuation of 5 million, 10 million, 20 million. Not in unicorn, but they are doing good business and the founders are building India and they're creating jobs. So you can go to a startup incubator. Bombay itself has got 40 to 50 incubators. Chennai has 40 to 50 incubators. Across India, there are 1,000 plus incubators and accelerators. So these are the, some of the things you can do after you have completed this course. Again, reflect for a minute. I request you to reflect for a minute. So I'm going to go off camera and then look up the next bunch of questions. So please reflect for one minute. Okay, so there are, um, there is one or two questions on a very, very important topic. And I love this question. And though, whoever has asked it, thank you for asking this question. And the question is, how do I lead a startup? And how do I become a leader in my company? So the question is all about leadership. And I think that's a brilliant question because all of you should aspire to become a leader, either of your startup or of your company. So I put together, because I've seen the question earlier as well, a slide on leadership. Okay, Let me start with the leadership journey. So I worked in corporate, in companies, global leading multinational companies in India, and I've been outside India too. I've seen at ground level and I've seen it at the board level of Asia or Africa and the Middle East. I've also seen in the last seven years with IIT and an NGO that I ran thousands of students who are aspiring leaders. So with all of that, I've tried to capture a typical leadership journey as follows. And for you to remember easily, I call it the P10 leadership journey. Easy to remember, P10. So what are the P10? What are the 10 Ps? So leaders start, and I'll talk in more details in a while. Leaders start with a purpose and a passion. So that's the first two P, purpose and passion. And remember, your passion or purpose doesn't have to be only in business. I'm going to talk more about business, but your passion could also be in cricket. You could want to be the next Virat Kohli. It could be in music. It, you may 
have a passion to become the next Shreya Ghoshal or your favorite singer. Your passion can be in movie or photography. And you want to be a leader in that domain. So you start with a purpose and passion. But it's not enough for you to be a leader because to, for you to lead, you have to have followers. People have to follow you. And we'll talk in more detail. So you have to paint a picture of what you're trying to achieve. And then you have to promote your vision. And you have to persuade people that your vision is worth following. But that's not enough too. You have to plan and you have to prepare to implement your vision. So for example, in cricket, if you are to win the IPL or the World Cup in T20 or Test match or whatever, and you are a leader of the team, it's not enough for you to just lay a vision, we'll be the World Cup champion or we'll win the IPL. You also need to have a plan and prepare for it rigorously prepare and then you have to perform so on the day of the match you have to perform on field or if you're a performer singer dancer on the day you are on stage you have to perform and you have to get feedback and make sure that whatever you're doing is sustainable so let's deep dive a bit more in the context of business. This was a broad leadership journey, okay? Let's talk to the first two P's first, purpose and passion. Now look back at whoever you think are your favorite leaders. You could start with social leaders. You could start with Mahatma Gandhi. You could start with Mr. Nelson Mandela. You could start with Martin Luther King. For startup founders, if you are a fan of starters and if you're passionate about entrepreneurship, you could think about Elon Musk or Steve Jobs or Mukesh Ambani or whoever you think is a role model. So what do the leaders do? First of all, leaders have an experience and based on the experience, they feel that there is a problem, which if solved can lead to a better world or a better business or a better outcome. And then they really have a purpose to solve that problem. I'll give you some examples in a while. And then they commit their lives or years or decades to solving that problem. So think about Mahatma Gandhi. He experienced colonialism in India, and he took a stance, and he said, free India, quit India. Look at Nelson Mandela in South Africa. He experienced apartheid between the white South Africans and the black South Africans. Or look at Mr. Nelson Mandela, who faced discrimination in the United States. In the world of business, the founder of Airbnb or Uber or Make My Show, Book My Trip or Swiggy or Zomato, they would have experienced a problem and they decided to take a stance. So during the COVID times, think back, those of you, most, most of you would have gone through COVID. The world was in trouble. But some people stepped up. Bharat Siram, who the, the owner, the, the, the leader, took a stance that I will make vaccines for India and for the whole world. The founders of Book My Trip, Make My Show, experienced problems, and they said, I'll do something to solve the problems for millions of people. And they built great businesses. In COVID, when there's a lockdown, the founders of Licious or Dunzo or Swiggy Instamart, etc., realized there's a problem because of the lockdown. And they wanted to help lots and lots of people by doing home delivery of food 
and other material. And in so doing, the leaders of these companies or the social leaders develop a passion and a purpose. And they said, I will solve this problem so that the world benefits many people. And in so doing, some of them have freed up countries. Mahatma Gandhi for India is a great example on Nitaji Subhash. Or they build big businesses. Same with Elon Musk or Bill Gates. Think about Jio, Mr. Ambani, and how Jio made online available to 100 crore Indians, 1 billion Indians, or what would the number be? But it's not enough to have a passion or purpose. Leaders also paint a picture of the future. So Azad India, Free India, or if you look at the current leadership of India, Amrit Kaal, or India of 2047, 2047 will be the 100th year of Free India. And what can you do between now and the next 25 years? We're already 75 years, so Amrit Kaal. Paint a picture, a compelling vision, and leaders say, imagine what can happen. Imagine how your lives can improve. Imagine how you don't have to go stand in queue to book a cinema ticket. You can just go to book my show and book your ticket. You don't have to wait for minutes and hours to get a taxi. You can use an Uber or an Ola. When you're traveling, you don't have to have the inconvenience of not having a hotel room because you can book a hotel room or a place to stay in OYO or Airbnb. So they paint a picture, but that's not enough to paint a picture. They also have to promote and persuade people to enroll into their pictures. So for a business, you have to get customers. And you have to say, why you must buy my product? And leaders do that very well. Why you must? What is in it for you? What is in it maybe for the planet or the people? Carbon emission. There are people who are working on carbon emission. There are people who are working and there are companies who are working to have net zero on water, which means they are creating more water through rain harvesting, etc., versus the water that they're using up. So it needs a lot of evangelization. And if you're a business leader or an entrepreneur, you have to evangelize your idea to investors, to your first few employees, to your co-founders, to your customers. And if you look at programs like Shark Tank, you will find a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs or current entrepreneurs evangelizing their ideas and their startups on reality TV. So that's evangelizing. So I've covered the first six P, purpose and passion, paint a picture, or promote and persuade. But that's not enough either. It's not enough to just paint a picture, you have a vision, you've got a lot of followers, and then you don't have a plan. Or your people are not capable of doing what needs to be done. So if you look at someone like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he led from the front. When he did the Dandi March, he led from the front. And then people slowly started following him. If you look at Netaji Subhash, he actually led from the front. He's Azad in force, to try, which tried to free British India. And if you look at business leaders, they lead from the front too. And they have a plan. And they tell their employees or their followers how you can achieve the vision. Here's a roadmap. And by the way, here is training. Here's how you can train to excel and deliver what you're trying to deliver. Leaders also provide resources. It's the job of the leader to give resources and training 
to our followers, and if you're a business leader, to give the training and the resources to your employees. Good leaders also give incentives for success. So if someone in a company has done outstanding work, typically that person will be recognized or rewarded in the business. And therefore, it's not only the leader who is passionate and has a purpose, slowly the entire country or all the employees of a company, all the members of a team, develop the same purpose and the same commitment. They work toward the same plan and it becomes like one champion team. Think of India winning a World Cup. It's one team. There's a leader. There's a vision of winning the World Cup. Everybody's on board that we need to win this World Cup. And then there's a plan and preparation to actually perform on the field. And if you win, there is an incentive, the recognition, playing for your country, or if you're in a company, making money for your company. But that's not enough too, because that may not, that may not be enough to sustain. Therefore, you have to perform and prosper in the long term. And as a company grows, everybody has to grow. It's not just the leader makes a lot of money or leader gets a lot of benefits. In the long run, there has to be mutual benefits. So if you're a company, the leader of the company will benefit and prosper, but you have to make sure that your employees benefit and prosper. You have to make sure as a leader of a business, that your customers see real benefit in the products and services. If you're a leader of the business, you have to make sure that your investors are getting returns on their investment. If you are a leader of a business, you have to make sure that you're paying your taxes and those taxes are actually funding India's growth. So you have to grow together. And then if you do all of this, you can be a very, very high-performing leader, leading high-performing teams, which are improving either the people, which means the customers, investors, or employees, or improving the planet, or improving the country itself. So I thought I'll just share this framework of a leadership journey. And I'm going to leave this on screen for a minute so you can reflect whilst I look up if there's any other question that I need to answer. Okay, so I'm, I'm just looking at some of the questions. There are some questions about, can some of you come to IIT Bombay and see the campus? So um, before I end this live session, I'd like to say that IIT Bombay itself has a lot of um, events. Apart from a cultural event, which is called Mood Indigo, we also run, IIT Bombay and students run a lot of entrepreneurial students, uh, events. It's run by e-cell. Most of the colleges, most of you will also have your own e-cells. So connect to the IT Bombay e-cell or the TechFest team through your own e-cell or your own activities. We also have a lot of clubs. We have a racing car club. We've got a drone club. We've got a submarine club. 
And we've got artificial intelligence club, electrical engineering clubs, all kinds of clubs. And all of you in your own colleges will have similar clubs. And I would encourage you to connect through your clubs. Enactus, those Enactus is an NGO. There are other NGOs which will be there in your own colleges. IIT Bombay also has an Enactus in Abu Dhabi. And you can connect through a social in initiative as well. As part of the social initiatives, you're most welcome to visit IIT Bombay, which is a question that some of you have asked. So with that, I've now reached the end of the live session. I would like to thank each of you who are attending this semester course for joining the course itself. And if you have not joined the first half of the course, which ran last semester, please find a way to do so. If you have questions, please put them on the discussion forum. Please also note, and this is an important announcement, and we can have we can have another session or we can answer your questions on the discussion forum that we are offering an exclusive access to a platform which is called Open Weaver Studio. I'm going to stop sharing here. And many of you would have seen an announcement. So what is Open Weaver Studio all about? First of all, it's a startup in Chennai. And what it does is that it has created a studio where any student, any working professional, any faculty with or without technical training, computer science training, coding capabilities, can actually create a digital solution for different domains, which means that it, this is a no-code solution. You don't have to code. It is a full-stack solution, which means it can be deployed end-to-end, -end, just like any other app that you're using, a solution that you're using, Swiggy or Zomato or Facebook or Instagram or Flipkart, or Amazon, or whatever, whatever you have. You can design your own full stack digital solution without knowing any coding. And you can do it and you can customize it for your favorite domain or the domain that you're passionate about. It could be on agri-tech, it could be on ed-tech, it could be on legal. And you will see that when you get to the site using the links that I had shared, in the discussion forum, there is a toolkit. There's a toolkit that you can see, but underlying the toolkit is several millions of open source toolkits. So OWS, which is the Open Weaver Studio, is a layer between crores and crores of millions and millions of open source code which is processed in a way such that you as a user can develop a solution without any coding in the domain that you want to specialize in. Now, how can you use it? The way you can use it is as you learn and you do some practice market research, and you can market research anything in your, within your college, within your company, in your neighborhood, and you find a solution. And you say, okay, I can solve this problem, just like the founders of Book My Trip did, founders of uh, Uber or Ola or Airbnb did, or Swiggy or Zomato did. If you identify problems that you have discovered using the skills from this course, market research course, or the, the lectures that I had at market research or customer segments, and you want to test out a digital solution, go out and test it out. And if you have any questions, reach out to the Open Weaver team because there's a helpline there. This Open Weaver Studio 
As a disclaimer, please note that this is not an IIT Bombay startup. It has not been promoted by either NPTEL or IIT Bombay. It is not being supported by IIT Bombay or NPTEL or any of the course faculty. It is just an added benefit that we are offering to my students so that you can not only learn from my lectures and from the guest lectures, but you can actually practice something. And who knows, as you practice, you may like what you have developed and you may go into a more specialized course in NPTEL or in your college, or you can go to a startup incubator and say, hey, you know what? I have this idea and here's a prototype. And that will heighten your chances of being accepted in an incubator or a startup program. And there are many across the country. This is what is being promoted by the government of India. So with that, remember this is a course. It's like a mini MBA course. It's targeted for anybody with an entrepreneurial intent who is understanding to, who's trying to understand business in a broader sense. But I hope that you'll be able to not only learn, you'll be able to embark in your own leadership journey, just like the examples that I shared. You will be able to embark on your own entrepreneurship journey. You can use the learnings and some of the tools that I've shared. So I wish you the best of luck in your career and your journeys. And with this, we are at the end of this live session. Thank you. Namaskar.